Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is uh, going to be discussing electoral matters and, of course, uh, the National Assembly, the Senate, of course, uh, which has given a go-ahead for the use of uh, direct uh, primaries uh, for, of course, the uh, Nigerian political parties. There have been certain persons who have spoken against it, and, of course, there's also a group of people who have said, yes, that is the way to go. Um, of course, seeing the argument uh, for or against direct or indirect primaries uh, here in Nigeria. We're speaking this morning with um, the chairman, Young Progressive Party, Ondo State Chapter, Dotun Ojon. Uh, good morning, Mr. Ojon. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's good to be here. Thank good you morning. for having me. We also have a public affairs analyst, Mr. Katch Onnonuju. Thanks for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Thanks for having me. All right, Mr. Onnonuju, I'll start with you. Um, and of course, I'd like you to speak with regards persons who have said the National Assembly should not be getting itself involved in intra-party affairs and how Nigerian political parties choose uh, to run their, their affairs. Um, what's your response to that? Do you think the National Assembly maybe? You know, you know, she has got gone too far. I agree. The National Assembly has no right to interfere in internal party matters in regards to how other people, in line with the law and existing extant uh, conventions, produce their candidates. You have different forms of primaries, and these primaries people should be allowed to choose as far as they are transparent enough as to not go against their stated rules. Having said that, I will say there is nothing wrong in the direct primaries. It is uh, uh, an arrangement that seems to mimic the original open ballot system. So I really do not see anything wrong with it. What we see that is wrong is the attempt to now turn it around the way the APC has done. You will see somebody counting and you will see 1, 2, 10, 14, 26, 27, 38, 22. That is very fraudulent. And then at the end of the day, uh, I give you an instance. Prior to the by-election in ABBA, the APC counted about 140,000 persons at its primaries, direct primaries. When it came to election proper, they get less than 4,000 votes. So when you start fraudulently counting without any, because it's an internal party issue, nobody was going to touch you. And then you fraudulently count that your primary had up to uh, 200,000 persons, and then at the election, you now score less than 4,000 votes. It simply shows the public that you are not sincere. That's the problem I've seen. But generally, the open primary system is a system that we can fine tune, we can do very well. And because these things are done on the camera, it's makes our democracy a laughing stop the way the APC has presented it. It is not a bad idea. It is the way the APC has tried to parade itself as exponents of open primary and in doing that abuse the process. You see, you can, it, all these things are based on perceptions. Perceptions are very, very important when it comes to political engineering. Open primary as exposed as done by Professor Mosu in the uh, option A4, was seen to be clean, was seen to be good, but when you now abuse it in the counting process, you don't care because under the law, the law sees it as an internal process. Nobody might come to tell you, why did you do this? It's against the law. Then people start losing their confidence in that particular process that looks very good. I'm not afraid of open primaries. Open primaries is good. And as I said earlier, the process will get well. Just as you saw us from open primary, we did a very good thing in allowing INEC, who had said that they have the mandate to conduct 
transmission of results from everywhere. Because if you look at the data set and how many words you need, how many characters you need to actually transmit, these are characters that can be transmitted easily by text, easily through the satellite system, which, of course, if you mandate INEC, they can buy telephones that can go through the both cellular system and also through the satellite system. And Nigeria has 100% satellite coverage and satellite phones are available and can be purchased by INEC. So when you see fraudulent people telling you that there is no service in their house, and yet me have gone to his house and had made phone calls from his house to other places, it starts to tell you that the system is actually undermined by the quality of leadership. And that's our problem. Leadership selection process is the bane of our democracy. Okay. Uh, let's also look at this. Between the 19th and the 20th century, uh, in the United States, some citizens were concerned about, uh, you know, the type of primaries, I mean, the, the way uh, they picked their candidate, and as such, uh, the system that was in practice at the time. And so they clamored for the direct primaries because the system at the time allowed for, you know, corruption in the political process. Now, looking at, because we know the shortfalls of the, I mean, indirect primaries as it is, uh, the fact that some influential people hijack the entire system because they do have the resources, and then you begin to see the uh, dollar rain, you begin to see people who buy uh, delegates and ensure that they have a particular candidate. The issue of Godfatherism thrives a lot in that system. With all of the shortfalls in the system uh, of the, uh, in the indirect primaries, that, that, that mode of picking candidate. Don't you think that we should be embracing, you know, the direct primaries as it is? Well, I think it's not about what we embrace. As I said earlier, it is the quality of leadership that guides that process. The quality of leadership that guides the process is what ensures the outcome. If you have very corrupt people, as you do now have uh, in several strata of our national life leadership, they will corrupt the process. If you have people who think about the country and the processes that bring it to a better place and could ultimately form, forge nationhood, then they will do things right. It doesn't really matter the process you use. The problem is the outcome is tainted by the bent mindsets of very corrupt leadership. So if you do indirect or direct primaries, you can get the same result. What the problem is, is when corruption undermines the process, then the outcome becomes a tainted and premeditated one. That's where I can put it. Okay. Indirect primary, because of who we are, seems like it's in your face. But then it also has its own problem because there are those who may want to secretly cast a vote for someone else. But when you now make it uh, direct, uh, you might still be afraid that if he is seen to physically have stood on so so and so person's line, that uh, somebody could harm him. Because don't forget, in our process, people do harm other people. You can see the use of threats. You can see the use of violence in Anambra State. You can also see the use of uh, this violence across the country. All that tells you is that violent people may be hired to come to centers where direct primaries are being done. And if anybody sees people standing on the line of a candidate they want to lose, they will send talks to go there and attack them physically. So... Uh, your, 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 your chances of being attacked physically could be uh, driven by what the eye sees you to stand. If the eye sees you to stand on the line directly of a candidate they do not want to win, they could come visit you with violence or they could mark you for later day elimination through violence. That's why to some of those, those are some of the problems of the direct primary. 
if right. you have security Mr. and the provision and safeguarding of life and property as we currently do not have in our country then you can understand that that direct primary could be very dangerous because people could now be persecuted simply because they have been seen to stand in a particular line for a candidate that uh, the violent man does not want to win right, so Mr. Nonaju, as it um, is good let, let's let's take it a pause also there. does have its own bad parts and that's why you saw during those days you're talking about in american history those days were days where there was white supremacist reactions against those who stood on lines that the supremacist violent people may simply say if you stand on that line then count yourself as marked for attack so people are a little bit you know mindful about these things when they are exposed but that does not say we cannot do this we can right. um, if Mr. Kind, kindly hold on um i, I think you, you know you've, you've already started moving into talking about some of the uh, negative um, aspects concerning direct primaries, but we, we would ex expand on that in a bit. Um, let's bring in uh, Dotun, you know, so he can also get to share his thoughts. Uh, Dotun or John, uh, the chairman, Young Progressive Party, on the state chapter. Uh, welcome once again. Um, I want you to share your views you. with regards um, the reaction that I stated earlier. Uh, the persons who say National Assembly has no business with inter-party or inter-party activities, and they should be allowed to, you know, freely choose how they elect their leadership. Uh, share your thoughts on that um, first, and then also go ahead and let us know what you think about direct or indirect. Okay, thank you so much for having me one, one more time. I think um, majorly we must understand that uh, what differentiates democracy from um, a military rule that we've had over the time is the National Assembly. So if in the process of democracy, we try to eliminate the National Assembly, then we we'll eventually have issues with our own kind of democracy. Now, anything that has to do with lawmaking is the duty of the National Assembly. And you cannot live within the space of a community and want to totally detach yourself from the engagement and the happiness in the community. So for those arguing that the National Assembly may not have total control over the activities of the uh, political party, they are right to that extent. But when you want to take a look at the National Assembly as the, the, the lawmaking body for an entire community, then I think they may not be totally right. So what the National Assembly has done, in my understanding and the understanding of uh, my political party, the Young Progressive Party, is still within the frame of um, what they have the power to do. Whether the other political parties are carried along or not is a discussion for another time. So let's leave the National Assembly. What they have done, <laughs> you know, minority will always have um, their voice, their say, so to say, but the majority will always have their way. And that's exactly what has played out. Now, when you want to talk about um, direct and indirect primary, I think we should be very careful the way we define it so that everybody will understand what it is. You see, direct primary is actually a method of choosing a candidate. It is not a form of election. What that means is that direct primary is not, uh, uh, it's not necessarily open ballot or secret ballot. Direct primary means that every member of the party will participate in the process of choosing their leader. They can participate secretly. They can participate openly. In other words, the direct primary we have even seen in some other places, they've been secret ballot. What that meant is that all the members of the political parties, they gathered together at a particular point, and what they did is they gave them a paper. You choose whosoever you want. And this kind of um, process is very, very important because we have built too many powerful politicians who directly... Um, um, decide the destiny direction of a whole lot of people, including their members. And this is what I mean. If you are to choose, for example, in a political party, they have what they call um, in a party system, uh, secretly or openly, there's this issue of um, statutory delegates. Statutory delegates are the appointees of government. 
the commissioners, the SA to the governor, the special advisor, the special assistant, and all that. By the time you want to pick a hundred delegates and you accommodate this statutory delegate, you discover that they've taken 40% slot of the entire delegate that are supposed to represent the political party in that election. So what happens at the end of the day, it means that the governor or whosoever gives them appointment will eventually decide the direction that the election will go. But in this kind of direct primary, that to a certain extent may be eliminated. So direct primary will give room in our belief as a political party, we give room for more people to participate in the process of choosing whosoever will represent their party in a particular election. And I think it may not be totally wrong to say that that will help us a great deal. Okay, still on the issue of uh, direct primaries. Now, some quotas are also saying that uh, this is not entirely to, you know, promote internal democracy, that there's an under, under interest, underlining interest. And that interest could be that, you know, the legislatures are trying to protect themselves from the governors. This is just to say, hey, there's an interest. They want to protect themselves from the governors. So it would also ensure their return because in most cases you find out that if this, uh, the governors actually have, would probably have delegates and when they do have delegates, uh, they can actually dictate, you know, maybe via monies and all of that, uh, who they want to, you know, go back to the Senate or to become a House of Rep members. And so uh, some people are arguing that this is not just totally for protecting the interest of internal democracies in political parties, but rather it is for the selfish interests of these lawmakers. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely right. Absolutely. You will see that, um, in fairness, we are building too, um, uh, too many powerful governors. And when you want to become powerful, be powerful in the kind of programs and projects that you execute, not in manipulating the political process. Absolutely true. But again, there's a gain in the entire process. For example, you can be a member of us of um, uh, um, the National Assembly, for example. That means that if you are still not popular, the people may still decide to vote against you during the primary. But what this has done is to have removed the hand of some powerful governors, no doubt about that. But again, the people will still continue to have their say and their way. In, like um, Mr. Nobiju has said, we still fall back to the issue of leadership, no doubt about that. But it must be sounded quite correctly also. They have also indirectly protected the interests of their party members who will definitely have a say in the entire um, process of choosing who represents them. Okay. Um, Mr. Nonoju, let's go back to you now. I want, I want you to, to respond to something um, that was uh, said by um, former Senator Shehu Sani. Uh, he said yesterday, indirect primaries are peaceful, but it's money. Direct primaries are popular, but it's chaotic. Um, and that's, of course, his response to the idea of uh, direct primaries or indirect. Uh, Mr. Nono, do, do you agree um, with that narrative? Indirect primaries are peaceful but cost a lot of money, um, while direct primaries are popular but, uh, you know, very chaotic. Yes, yes. yes. And, and also uh, talk about the money angle concerning direct primaries. You know, there's people who I said, said that it's before, more difficult to bribe direct, that many it people. Is in Nigeria, whether it is direct primary or indirect primary, money is involved. You are talking about the scale of money. When it is direct primary, we have more people participating. When it is indirect primary, it's all as prescribed by the rules of the party. You could do direct primary, and yet it will be delegate based. Then the delegates directly stand where they want to be. You could do direct indirect primary, and yet you will still uh, have it uh, as chaotic if you don't know, organize yourself. I've said this before. When it is direct primary, it comes a lot of risk. What uh, she forgot to say is that it is how the parties 
choose. Direct primaries, who are the people that do direct primaries? Is it every membership of the party? It is still based on the rules speculated by the party. Direct primaries, all <clears throat> delegates will stand. So we are just seeing this law. The law has not gone nitty gritty into what, com what composition those who will vote at the direct or indirect primary will be. A party could tell you, we are doing direct primary, but then direct primary shall be by special delegates, special this, special that. So we are still in it. The law hasn't told us, it has not been passed to tell us that it has to be all membership of the party. There will be no delegates. Don't forget, we've had these issues of delegates. So if the direct primary will cancel the idea of delegates, and then the law says it cancels delegates, then that means you will not uh, be able to manage. That's where the chaotic part of it comes in. But if the direct primary will still be based on who, is qualified to vote at the primary, you could call, if you have a direct primary for all 240 participants, those are people who have been selected to come and do this. It's different from having a direct primary that you see everybody from the world level can now line up. So these are still what we have not yet finished. The political parties are the ones to talk about who can vote at their primaries. Direct primary is only about the move of that election. Everybody will stand in line. What does the internal party rules say about who is qualified to stand in line? Is it those who have been previously selected? So that's what you have to understand. If you come now to elect for a Senate, who are the people that will stand? Yeah, you could have direct primaries initially from the world level. And then those who emerge will now become the ones who will stand directly at the primary of the local government level. And then those who will stand during the direct primary and <coughs> sorry about that. Those who will stand at the direct primary, it depends. It could be managed. Let us wait for the laws to come out. All right. <coughs> Um, uh, Mr. Um, um, or John, uh, let's bring you in here. Uh, um, yes. Sorry, Mr. Ononaju, you may want to grab a glass of water. Uh, Mr. John, um, <coughs> now I want to was uh, to get you to speak about um, me uh, party membership and how this is going to open up, you know, another conversation in in the parties on the registration of uh, their members and how they will be more critical, you know, about this now. Uh, saying that they do not want the influx of non-party members to participate in, um, you know, the election process, you know, or in the direct primaries. Um, so how how vital is this uh, aspect? If you remember also, Mr. Nondiju has stated something that happened in Aba, where they stated that they had more than 100,000 people participate in the primaries and, less than, and, and then about 4,000 people vote. Um, so um, membership of the parties and their registration of members, how vital is this uh, perspective? Okay, um, I just took part in an election as a candidate of the New Progressive Party on the um, 10th of October 2020. And one thing that INEC did, we must continue to understand the fact that uh, our processes are getting better. One thing that INEC did um, some months before the election was to ask um, all the political parties that, that intended to do a direct primary to submit the list of all the members of the party. So okay. when you... This, then because in our own party, the New Progressives Party, before your party owns that register, you have access to, to your card. The, the um, what was it called? The passport actually to reduce whether you have the capacity to change the passport at any process. So what I think will happen is that if we are going to do a direct primary for um, any office, the list of membership of any political party will have first got to INEC some days or some months before that primary. 
so that because INEC has to be represented in the place of the direct primary. So you go through the process, you bring your membership card, then they look through the file that the party had earlier submitted to INEC to identify that ah, Dotu is actually a member of Young Progressive Party. This is my card, and my name actually tallies with the list that the party has submitted before time. I think the direct primary is just um, um, a microscopic exercise of what the general election should look like. So there will be issues here and there, no doubt about that. You, we are not running a perfect system. <clears throat> in fact, we do not have a perfect people to run an imperfect system. So we are in a situation where we have imperfect people running an imperfect system. So there will be issues here and there, but people will continue to grow. Systems will continue to be developed. I need we continue to understand the nyanis and the peculiarity of the Nigerian people. So there will be issues here and there, no doubt about that. But with what I've told you now, I think I make with demand for the register of the political party before any direct primary is held. And you that you are coming to vote, you will come with uh, what was it called? An identification miss that we actually tally with the list that your party has earlier submitted to INEC. This is not going to totally eradicate issues because, of course, we still have issues in our election, but at least to a certain degree, I think it will minimize some of the problems that might arise. Okay. That's uh, right. All right, Dr. Still staying with you now. Uh, uh, you are a chairman of uh, a political party. And the reason this conversation, we're having this conversation is because, I mean, if you look at, you know, the political parties across the country, uh, some element uh, is missing, and that's the element of democracy. And we know that that has a trickle-down effect on what happens, because at the end of the day, uh, let's talk about the issue of Godfatherism, the fact that you have someone who puts you there against the will of the people in the party. And that makes it, you know, almost impossible because Nigerians would always choose, I mean, you, I have to choose with the options, the options that have been presented, especially in a situation where we seem to have, you know, two dominant political parties. So uh, really, really expansiating or talking more about this, how then can we solve the problem of lack of uh, democracy in the political party and end this issue of Godfederism in our system? Because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the masses would definitely suffer. Whatever happens in the party, uh, you know, it's been pushed out to the people. And then it feels like we have no choice than to take it. Okay. Um, I, I want us to start by understanding that um, it's only in Africa that we continue to demonize the issue of Godfatherism. And that's because of the fact that greed has become our God. Ordinarily, the concept of Godfatherism is a traditional concept. It moved from being a traditional concept to being a religious concept. If you got married in, um, in, in a church, for example, if you have to get married in a church, there must be somebody who brings you to the altar, not necessarily your parent, they, in some of these orthodox churches, they even refer to them as your godfather. These are people who have experience in marriage, who are supposed, the church believes that when you follow this set of people, they are going to show you the light of how, how marriage will work. In our traditional settings, we have what we call the kingmakers. They are godfathers in their right. But because in politics, godfatherism, it's been seen as a man who sits somewhere, does nothing, and gets all the gain of government. And of course, that's the reality. That is why everybody wants to run away from the issue of being a godfather or being named with a godfather. Now, there's, a, there's supposed to be naturally a leadership recruitment process. What does it entail? It entails that a person that is coming into government or into politics or into governance has somebody is looking up to, has somebody who will give credible advice that can be followed for the benefit of the masses. When I ran for, for election, for example, I had to rely on some people outside of the country because I knew that once I rely on people inside of the country, that a lot of people will tell me as a godson to somebody who doesn't have a credible character. You get what I'm saying? So the concept of political godfatherism 
in essence, it's not a bad concept. But because everything in Nigeria is about money, bring the money, bring the money, do it my own way. I want to gain something from the governance process. That's why everybody right. is against right. it. Having Mr. said John. that, having said that, one of the ways to deepen democracy in a party system is to allow party members to have a say and have a way. And one of the ways to do that is to actually prevent somebody sitting somewhere from having direct, um, uh, uh, from having final say over the entire political process. And I think this direct primary that we talk about, to a certain extent, we have impact on that. Um, Mr. John, that, Mr. John um, also, because in the interest of time, um, Dr. Ojon, I apologize, in the interest of time, um, we may have to wrap up here. Mr. Onojuju, can you still hear us? Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'm sorry. I know you had um, to take a short break earlier, but we would like to wrap up with you, um, Dr. Ojon. Um, apologies because of time. Okay. Um, Mr. Onojuju, can you just quickly in 30 seconds share with us um, what your expectations are as we continue to fine tune the electoral process? Because that's how some of these things have been described. In order for Nigeria to have a, a cleaner, a finer electoral process, are you excited? Are you looking forward to, you know, a, a, a better, you know, um, electoral process in the next couple of years? Yes. The single fact that they've allowed INEC to introduce technology that will help the election be better from their own perceptions, it's the greatest thing we have gotten election-wise under the Buhari presidency. Allowing for the inclusion of innovations that will make the election better. And in that case, INEC said that they have the capabilities for electoral transmission of results. Electoral transmission of results eliminates the need for collection centers because rigging of election are normally done at collection centers. If you remove collection centers, you also remove the need for people to be hijacked, were laid on the road, killed, and results snatched. And then you also now make it possible that results generated from boots where there are agents present are what will be transmitted to a general collection room where the tabulations will be done and, if possible, the pre-announcements made as right. to how the projections are going. I believe we can build on that. Okay. I believe that singular issue of transmission will go a long way to also get, because INEC can employ satellite technology if it does not have cellular reception well, in any part of the country. Hopefully we will, we will get to that stage, um, you know, as soon as possible, you know, but of course, um, for now, it's kudos on the steps that we have taken and, of course, looking forward to what more um, innovations you need to come into our electoral process. Um, Dr. Ojan, thank you very much for your time this morning. Catch on on Uju, thank you so much also for joining us and uh, for, your, for sharing your Friday morning with us. Looking forward to speaking with you both again. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for thank having you. me. All right. Stay with us on The Breakfast. Uh, we'll co come back and talk a little bit about sports. Blessing of Kagbar is in the news this morning and she's our focus next.